if you grill your food, if it's fried food, if it's toasted to a high heat, it can lead to these advanced glycation end products. Microwaving disaster. Don't cook in the microwave. Make sure if you don't want to age, don't activate your ages, which will cause raging in your body of inflammation. And that is not good. So these things age you. And the medical term for them, this A-G-E-S or ages, is advanced glycation end products. And we're going to talk all about them, what they're wearing. You've probably never heard of them, but they're really important and they're screwing you up big time, even if you never heard of it. So these are these are compounds that form in our body under all sorts of conditions from poor diet to stress to various insults and toxins. Um and they also can come from our food, depending on how we cook our food, that we can we can actually consume them. Um, and what's interesting, they bind to receptors <laughs> that are called rages, our R-A-G-E-S, re- receptors for advanced glycation end products. So these funny acronyms, right? So aging or ages cause raging, <laughs> right? And that leads to inflammation throughout the body. So these advanced glycation end products drive inflammation, which is also one of the key hallmarks of aging or inflammation. And they've been linked to everything from heart disease to diabetes to all sorts of health issues. So let's talk about the science of ages and what you can do to protect yourself. So what are they? Well, they're they're problems um, that happen when we are consuming particularly a lot of sugar and processed food. uh, And we have other things in our environment that cause oxidation like toxins. Uh, It causes the formation of proteins and sugars to combine in the body. So you've got sugars and carbohydrates and proteins in all your cells, and then they kind of combine in ways that cause damage. So um, it's a non-enzymatic reaction that basically happens um, when you know groups of amino acids and proteins and, and sugars sort of connect together. Now, um, you probably are familiar with this because it's what happens when you get a crust on a loaf of bread or you get the crispy skin on a chicken or you get that little crispy crust on the creme brulee, you know, where they they basically cause damage to the proteins and the sugars and it forms this crispy crust from the sugars and the uh and the and the proteins in the in the in the creme brulee. And so you get this, you know, yummy stuff to eat, but that actually causes a lot of problem in the body. So when when um basically proteins and and, and our sugars uh, combine uh, together, they create this process called glycation. And um, if you grill your food, if it's fried food, if it's toasted to a high heat, it, it can it can lead to these advanced glycation end products. Microwaving disaster, don't cook in the microwave, causes a lot of these advanced glycation end products. So even if you think you're eating healthy, uh, if you're actually eating a lot of the crispy stuff or overcooked stuff or burnt stuff, that's that's really bad. So Um, you know, what happens is when you have a high blood sugar, this is the most common reason you have high blood sugar, which by the way, 93% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy, meaning they have some form of pre-diabetes or type two diabetes. They have balance imbalance in their blood sugar. When you have that, that excess blood sugar binds to proteins. Now, the one we are familiar with that you've all heard, probably heard about is hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C essentially means glycated hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is, uh, you know, in your cells, in your red cells, it is involved in carrying oxygen. And then if it's too much blood sugar, it gloms onto those and, and forms these uh, advanced glycation end products. And we measure that in the blood as hemoglobin A1C. And the higher hemoglobin A1C, the worse your diabetes is, right? It's a sort of indirect measure of your average blood sugar. So we've known about this for a long time. But, but um, you know, we can also have, even if we don't have high blood sugar, and if we don't have you know, a high A1C, we can actually still get uh, advanced glycation end products from cooking uh, in things in the wrong way. So, you know, whether you have, you know, the, you know, grilling or or crispy cooking or frying or things like that, all, all that browning stuff uh, is a sign of advanced glycation end products. Um, also, processed food has a lot of them. So you want to stay away from processed food. So why are they so bad? Well, they basically create this vicious cycle of inflammation, which increases more advanced glycation end products and and creates a vicious cycle. Now, they also found not only to be um, 
um, correlate with inflammation, but also linked to real serious diseases like diabetes, heart disease, uh, Alzheimer's. They're basically uh, toxic molecules, and then they create more oxidative stress or reactive oxygen species. They kill cells. They cause organ damage. They damage your mitochondria, which you need for <laughs> optimal functioning and health. Basically, they're the worst things for your longevity and for your health span. So now doctors are starting to pay attention to this. Uh, and there's some really simple things you can do from a lifestyle perspective to reduce your um, advanced glycation end product formation in your body and also your exposure from your diet. First is, not surprising, cut down sugar and starch. I know you get sick of me saying this, but it is the central thing that's driving most diseases. People who eat a lot of sugar and starch, they tend to have higher blood sugar, they have more a higher A1C. So your A1C should be probably between five and five and a half. It starts to go over five and a half, it's a sign you're getting into trouble. And some people say even lower is better, like five or 5.2. I like mine around five, five, one, two. I don't like it higher than that. Now, balancing your blood sugar is key. And I've written a lot about this. You know, the 10 day detox diet is a great uh, roadmap for how to do that. We'll link to that in the show notes. But it's a, it's a basically a sugar detox book. It's basically how do you, uh, you know, deal with the sugar addiction? How do you reset your palate? How do you reset your hormones? How do you reset your brain chemistry and your biology so you actually don't want as much sugar and starch and you can actually eat in a more balanced way and not be consuming these foods? So really important. Um, get lots of natural antioxidants. So things that are in food, all the phytochemicals, curcumin, green tea, quercetin from things like onions and garlic, Himalayan tartary buckwheat, all that helps to reduce uh, the age, ages and their, and their problems. So lots of colorful fruits and vegetables, lots of herbs and spices, uh, really important. Also, olive, olive uh, oil is important. Olive leaf extract is a great source of antioxidants that inhibits ages. Um, it's also atherogenic prevention to prevents heart attacks and plaque. It's anti-inflammatory. It's anti-cancer, protects your brain. Uh, and so I, I always use a ton of olive oil. You can actually take extracts of olive oil. Olerapine is a powerful longevity compound. That's why a lot of the blue zones, they all eat a lot of olive oil. Um, and it can help the microbiome as well. I, I, I love it because it's also a, a polyphenol that the gut bacteria love and can reduce inflammation that way and can slow down ages. Um, don't eat the deep fried foods. Don't have foods, you know, coated in sugar like barbecue sauce. <laughs> don't have heavily grilled foods, charred foods. Get away from all that stuff. Um, and that will help reduce your intake of ages. So, uh, you know, if you want to have once in a while, fine, but try more slow, low, slow, moist cooking methods. Also being able to actually use marinades can help offset that. So if you're having grilled meat, for example, marinate it in, um, you know, things with vinegar or lemon or things that are acidic or, and spices, which will reduce the effect of that. Also exercise is amazing. Studies show that regular movement exercise also helps to reduce ages and, um, and lastly, any steps you take to reduce inflammation and overall health will be helpful. So all the things we talked about, getting healthy diet, exercise, adequate sleep, stress reduction, the right supplements, all help you to actually reduce overall inflammation and live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, which we've talked a lot about on the podcast. And that will help reduce your ages as well. So this has hopefully been helpful to you. It's a little deep sciencey stuff, but I think it's important to understand why we need to do the things we do, like why we need to not eat so much sugar and starch, why we should be avoiding all the crispy fried stuff that we might like, but is doesn't like us. Um, and uh, as a friend of mine said, you want to eat food that you love and that loves you back. So <laughs> make sure you do that. Uh, on a final note, please know that, you know, going to the occasional barbecue isn't going to be, you know, the worst thing in the world for you, but don't make it a habit, right? Um, basically, predominantly eat right and then occasionally cheat it's fine but but make sure you are are not doing this on a regular basis if you love that last video you're gonna love the next one check it out here high blood pressure is a real killer it's the silent killer you often don't know you have it but it's a huge driver of kidney failure strokes heart attacks dementia it's a big deal um now normally it's treated with medications uh 